so uh, case of a 48 48 year old man presenting with the uh, with history of right insular uh, glioblastoma multiform status post resection uh, chemotherapy and involved field radiation therapy so these are the images provided so as you can see that there is a t2 hyper intensity and a mild expansion in the right anterior temporal lobe and uh, the subinsular region uh, with irregular enhancement so this is these are the post enhancement post contrast sequences there is irregular enhancement in this region and uh, the resection cavity this resection cavity has uh, it has a rim which is uh, basically uh, it is uh, hyper intense on t2 uh, this rim is hyper intense on t2 and uh, it is also hyper intense on t1 as well so this is hyper intense rim on uh, this is the t1 sequence it's hyper intense on t1 and t2 both sequences and uh, this is the player sequence so it's hyper intense rim so this is quite consistent with the presence of blood products these are the mr uh, perfusion weighted uh, images and uh, these are the mr perfusion weighted images and uh, this uh, shows the corresponding uh, here you can see that there is corresponding decreased cerebral blood volume this is the ftg pet scan and it reveals the corresponding hypometabolism there is hypometabolism here this is the uh, perfusion weighted imaging and it shows the decreased cerebral blood volume along with hypometabolism in the FTG PET scan. So this is a, a typical imaging presentation of uh, radiation necrosis. This is a case of radiation necrosis and uh, in the differentials you can put recurrent uh, neoplasm in it, also abscess, foreign body reaction and uh, subacute infarction next is a 58 year old woman uh, presenting with the ataxia and uh, these are the images provided now as you can see that uh, the t2 weighted image is quite normal it is a very normal appearing image there's no definite abnormality here however on t1 image you can show uh, you can see that there is symmetric abnormal uh, relatively uniform hyper intense signal within the globus pallidus within the globus pallidus so this is the location of the globus pallidus and there is quite abnormal symmetric uniform hyper intense signal within this region so this is a typical imaging presentation of chronic liver disease so this is a chronic liver disease case and in the differentials you can put total parenteral nutrition magnesium toxicity radiation and chemotherapy the cns tumors and neurofibromatosis one next is a three-year-old girl uh, uh, with upper respiratory infection one week ago history of uh, upper respiratory infection one week ago and now presenting with profound lethargy so these are the images provided as you can see that on flare sequence there are numerous uh, asymmetric hyper intense lesions in the white matter of the cerebral hemispheres in the white matter of the cerebral hemispheres here you can see the symmetric asymmetric hyper intense lesions in the white matter also in the cerebellum and also in the brain stem these are the asymmetric hyper intense lesions and uh, many of these lesions are actually hyper intense on dwi as well so this is the uh, dwi picture and these are all hyper intense many of these lesions are hyper intense that is they are showing restricted diffusion on dwi so this is uh, considering the uh, history clinical picture uh, this is a typical case of acute disseminated encephalomyelitis that is adam this is a typical case of adam and in the differentials uh, you can put multiple sclerosis encephalitis and vasculitis now 35 year old man presenting with the new onset of seizures and uh, these are the images provided now as you can see 
that on the non-contrast CT scan, there is a hypoattenuating mass which is involving the left frontal and the subinsular white matter and the left basal ganglia. Also, there is mild local mass effect. Now, this mass is, uh, uh, this is the T2-weighted MRI and this is the T1-weighted MRI and this is, these are the flare sequence. So, you can see that it is uh, uh, hyper intense on T2-weighted imaging. It is hyper intense on T2 and uh, it is uh, hypo intense, hypo intense on T1. And uh, on the post contrast sequence, we can see that there is no significant enhancement on the post gadolinium sequences. And uh, the mass is uh, this is the flare sequence. Sorry, this is the flare sequence. Sorry, this is the flare sequence, and this mass hyper intense on flare sequence. And uh, on T2, you can see this is hyper intense on T2, and also it is hyper intense on flare sequence, although uh, much less hyper intense compared to the T2 hyper intensity. This is quite uh, avid hyper intensity. Compared to that uh, signal, this signal is uh, much less hyper intense compared to the T2 hyper intensity. So we can say that uh, also there's little surrounding edema here. There's quite little surrounding edema. And uh, the perfusion imaging mapping here shows the decreased cerebral blood volume uh, relative to the normal brain. Relative to the normal brain, uh, there's quite uh, uh, decreased uh, cerebral blood volume. So this is the typical imaging picture of low-grade fibrillary astrocytoma. This is a case of uh, astrocytoma. And in the differentials, so this is a case of astrocytoma, low grade fibrillary astrocytoma, and in the differentials, you can put the uh, anaplastic astrocytoma and the oligodendroglioma and subacute infarction and encephalitis. So, next case is of a 68-year-old man presenting with the memory loss and uh, These are the images provided. Now, as you can see, that uh, this is the coronal, coronal sequence of uh, T1-weighted MRI, and uh, there is bilateral, there is bilateral uh, hippocampal atrophy. Here, this is the bilateral hippocampal atrophy, which is uh, proportionately greater than the diffuse cerebral atrophy present here. So there is diffuse cerebral atrophy here. However, this atrophy is greater. This bilateral hippocampal atrophy is greater than the diffuse cerebral atrophy. And uh, also, this is the FDG PET scan and it shows a relative uh, hypometabolism in the posterior parietal right and temporal lobes. So there is relative hypometabolism in the posterior parietal and temporal lobes. So this is a typical case of Alzheimer's disease. This is a case of Alzheimer's. And uh, in the differentials, uh, these imaging findings are quite typical for Alzheimer's disease. And uh, you have to uh, differentiate it uh, from other causes of dementia, that is vascular or frontotemporal dementia, and uh, because the uh, the problem is with the early recognition of this case of Alzheimer's disease, you know, and starting the treatment immediately. So uh, this is a case of Alzheimer's disease. These are the typical imaging uh, pictures of Alzheimer's disease.
Next is uh, the case of 27-year-old patient with a history of uh, epistaxis, dyspnea, uh, prior transient ischemic attacks, and headaches. These are the images provided here. So, as you can see, that uh, this is the detuvated MRI axial scan, and it shows an abnormally prominent vascular flow void, abnormally prominent vascular flow void, which is coursing within the right cerebellar hemisphere. On the catheter angiogram images, uh, you can see here on the catheter angiogram images uh, of the vertebral artery, there is an abnormal tangle of vessels here. This is the abnormal tangle of vessels with an early phase draining vein. Okay, so this is the early phase draining vein with an early phase draining vein which is consistent with arteriovenous malformation. This is the early phase draining vein. Uh, this image is the pulmonary arteriogram and it shows the abnormally uh, dilated uh, vessels and the early uh, filling of the enlarged venous channels which is uh, again consistent with a pulmonary arteriovenous malformation that is AVM. So this case is a typical uh, imaging presentation of osler weber Rendu syndrome that is hereditary hemorrhagic uh, telangiectasia and uh, in the differentials you can put multiple intracranial malformations without HHT and multiple intracranial developmental venous anomalies that is venous angiomas can be put in the differentials. So next is 76 year old patient presenting with new headache and uh, speech difficulty and uh, these are the images provided here. So as you can see that uh, there is a lesion in the left posterior temporal lobe with the moderate mass effect. You can say there is moderate mass effect. This lesion is, uh, as you can see here, this is T1 weighted imaging. It is iso intense on T1. It is hyper intense on uh, T2 uh, to the adjacent brain parenchyma. And on post contrast sequence, there is no enhancement. There is no enhancement in this lesion on post contrast sequence. On the gradient echo or T2 star weighted sequence, as you can see, that there is a peripheral hypo intense rim. This is the peripheral hypointense rim, which is surrounding a partially isointense center. This is isointense center. This is the peri uh, peripheral hypointense rim. So this is a typical imaging uh, presentation of hemorrhage. That is hyperacute hemorrhage. This is hyperacute intracerebral hemorrhage. And uh, in the differentials, uh, you can put primary intracerebral hemorrhage. That is hypertensive bleed or cerebral amyloid angiopathy hemorrhagic tumor, of course, vascular malformation, any vascular malformation, and that is AVM or cavernous malformation, uh, venous sinus thrombosis, and vasculopathies like vasculitis or mycotic or pseudoaneurysms can be put in the differentials. Okay. So, another case, 50-year-old woman presenting with the worst headache of life. So, this worst headache of life uh, presentation is uh, quite typical for uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. However, we are going to proceed with the normal uh, imaging descriptions and then give the diagnosis. So, this is the non-contrast uh, CT scan and it shows the high attenuation material within the suprasalar, the interpeduncular, the interpeduncular and the ambient cisterns as well as the sylvian and the interhemispheric fissures, sylvian and the interhemispheric fissures, which is consistent with subarachnoid hemorrhage. So this imaging picture is quite typical for subarachnoid hemorrhage. Uh, also, uh, there is, uh, you can see that there is dilatation of the temporal horns due to the hydrocephalus. This dilatation of the temporal horns due to the hydrocephalus. This is the coronal, uh, this is the coronal, and this is the axial uh, maximum intensity projection, that is MIP images, and they show a superiorly uh, 
uh, there here you can see that there is a superiorly directed out pouching which is arising from the uh, basilar artery terminus here you can see that this is the basilar artery and this is the terminal end of the basilar artery and this is the uh, superiorly directed out pouching which is arising from this basilar artery and it is quite a typical imaging picture of uh, basilar tip aneurysm so this is the basilar tip aneurysm so this is basically subarachnoid hemorrhage secondary to the uh, ruptured basilar tip aneurysm this is the non-traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage case uh, secondary to the ruptured basilar tip aneurysm and uh, in the differentials you can put non-aneurysmal uh, perimesencephalic uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage and traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage